<laughs> All right, everybody. Tim Timmons here with another 10,000 minute experiment. I'm real sad you didn't record it. I just did. Oh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Never question Tim. Yeah. Uh, well, that was Chris Cleveland. What's up? Hey, Chris. Hey, hey, hey Chris Cleveland. Well, we've never done that ever. Hey. You and act like you were part of a frat <laughs> back well, in the day. If I gave a Delta. <laughs> Go. Did that just come out of your? Where did that come from? Did you know somebody that was in something like that? I was in a fraternity for a little <gasps> while. Yeah, guys, let's not talk about it. No, <laughs> let, let's let us. Oh my I wore a lot of Express button-down shirts, <laughs> loafers. This is a different time, guys. We might have to we'll do see a if we can find some photos. Okay, so you you belonging. give me crap about my song, so I'm gonna now, now find yeah. hey, find pictures I've of you. I still got that Tim Tim and CD sitting on my desk, so. <laughs> Uh, just keep three copies left. It. Let's go. All right, Moy. Donise. Hi. Oops. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't mean to uncover something like that. I was just kidding. Uh, then the to guy. my left, we've got the Ryan Stevenson. Mm. The one and only. The, yeah. <laughs> well, are, I, uh, are there a bunch of Ryan Stevensons? I, Is that like a pretty common name? Well, I'm, I'm learning that there are a bunch of us out there. Yeah. Because every time somebody accidentally tags one of the other ryan stevensons right. on social media those guys end up hitting me up mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and we have this kind of like weird interaction and they're Isn't like why are all these christian music fans tagging <laughs> me yeah. i play soccer yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yes. are there any total characters there are some there are there there's one dude in particular ryan stevenson if you're listening <laughs> right my, my canadian counterpart right, right, right. uh he's definitely i would not say that he's in the CCM space, right, right. Just That's by contemporary looking, Christian music, everybody. by looking yep. at his videos and his content. Uh, Have you seen Chris's content? I, <laughs> Sorry, not keep in going, a minute. Keep <laughs> but every time, like people accidentally tag him, yeah, or they they are looking for me and they find him, yeah. Like people are looking for Ryan Stevenson, the guy who sings "Eye of the Storm," and then they go out and looking for Ryan Stevenson and they find Ryan, Ryan Stevenson, Stevenson in Canada, yeah with like tatted from head to toe and the skin tight white tank top and you know yep. the, oh. the content that's in his you probably in saw his some more videos. records man uh, it's i think it's always a, a nice interesting surprise for people who are looking for me and find him yeah yeah well that's that's so funny because this week we're talking about tattoos <laughs> and the spiritual ramifications are so. we great sweet this is gonna be awesome this is where we get canceled god um, i'm not ready man it was um, episode 18. donise you don't have too many amoy donises are there other amoy donises no no i've never even heard of another one i haven't either there aren't others are there other amoys the no i mean maybe I, I mean, rumor has it, because my family's so big, they're rumors, yeah. that my dad met someone in the elevator with my name, and that's how he liked my name. Other people say I have a cousin that has that name. I've never met her. Hmm. So I don't know what's real. Gosh. Mm -hmm. In this world. <laughs> how many how many Tim Timmons are there? Tim Timmonses? There aren't, there aren't a lot of us, but uh, one was, it, it is an umpire. Okay. In the major yes, leagues. Yes, yeah. I saw that the I other get day. hate mail from that guy. Because everyone's like, you <laughs> bastard. You, I mean, it's, I get full on hate mail from hate Tim Timmons, the Empire. So Tim Timmons, the Empire, if you're listening. <laughs> this is great. I think you're doing great. Like, there's, <laughs> a, yeah. there's an actor named Chris Cleveland, and he was in The Prestige. <gasps> and I'm pretty sure that we get each other's email every once in a while. Because I think he's just Chris Cleveland at gmail.com. You know what I mean? Strong. You know, it's, it's pretty That's amazing. Solid. So yeah. Oh my goodness. Well, speaking of names, uh, Ryan Stevenson. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> welcome. Thank you welcome. guys for Bienvenidos. having me. Bienvenidos. That means welcome That's in Spanish. All of you. Welcome. Yes. <laughs> yeah, just welcome. Mucho all, gusto. Of, all his forms. Wait, wait, wait. All you Ryan Stevensons, so welcome. Can I not say bienvenidos to one person? You say bienvenido. <gasps> wow. Oh no. Yes. Yeah. Get rid of that thing. <laughs> everyone's day i'm so sorry guys no, no, no. i'll stop talking at some point i do need to tell my no. story of my translating story <laughs> oh yes that will bless me. that will be another time because that would be really inappropriate inappropriate <laughs> <laughs> well speaking of inappropriate tattoos ryan yeah would you have any um a yeah i got a couple 
Well, <laughs> like lower back, <laughs> like the stamp right. We lost eye contact from Ryan Stevens. Just, it's it's just like a dolphin and like jumping wanna... over the sunset. <laughs> yes. I have a full lower back stamp yeah. wrap around barbed wire. Ooh, yeah. I uh, love that tribal barbed wire. That's yeah. like cool in '97. Meets it was like my first tattoo. Yeah. I'm just yeah. kidding. Thor- thorns, thorns, <laughs> crowd of thorns. Yeah. Oh, I have some tattoos. Yeah. I. Got my first tattoo when I was 18. You know, I was in college. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I was away from mommy and daddy yeah. for the first time. I was just cut loose in the amazing city of Eugene, Oregon, where this, if you know anything about you, <laughs> it's actually really if beautiful. you know anything yeah. about Eugene, man. Uh, anyhow, I was messing around on my binder one day and I was drawing all these designs and I drew this cool design of a cross. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to go get that. Yeah tattooed on my shoulder Mm -hmm. so that's what i did yeah watch me rebel parents oh man and i remember i i i pierced my tongue i bleached my hair jet white Mm. uh with literally like this peroxide who's your favorite band at this point that's a valid question Well, i mean i was like totally it was probably like sublime or Mm -hmm. sugar ray or yeah you know I was I was totally into hip hop and like that late '90s, early 2000s, just pop stuff. I love it. Takes um, me right there, man. Mm-hmm. I I go get tatted up, and everybody was warning me. They're like, "Hey, man, if you get if you start getting tattoos, it's really hard to just get one and just stop there." And so I think like you know, thirty later. Yeah. So I've been getting tattoos for twenty years. Yeah, man. And I think mm-hmm. I've got a lot of them now. Yeah. I wouldn't say I'm <laughs> sleeved. Yeah, right, but right. I have enough to, and I'm kind of at the point now where my wife doesn't necessarily like them, but we've been together so long, and I always get them when I'm out on the road tour. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I can kind of sneak them in now because there's so many that if I get a little <laughs> one, that's that's hilarious. I just I don't really tell her anymore. Yeah, I just yeah. come home and like six months will go by and she's like, hey, uh. When did you get that? I'm like, oh, yeah. baby, I've, I've, I've had that this for like a while. year. Remember, that's, that's so old. Well, I'm so glad she's not going to listen <laughs> to this. Pretty much the opposite of Kinsey and I. She like, <laughs> Kinsey just shows up with new tattoos all the time. And I stopped asking. Or yeah. like, I'm like, babe, just you're going to do it, so just go yeah, get just, it. Yeah. Just don't do tell it. me The that. addiction's real. Yeah, it is. Well, speaking of the addiction. Why are you looking at me? <laughs> I don't have any. I don't have any. <laughs> but you, pro- you would you? I would. I have been wanting to, but I don't like doing things alone. So I'm like, who else wants to get tatted with me? <laughs> Guys, this is all. You, this is your turn, everybody here. Just yeah. press pause. But my best friend just moved into town, and she's like, I'll go get him with you. So the wow. plan is next there month. So I'll, I'll be joining the gang. This yeah. is right. real. Are you just gonna yeah. get Donise on the like on the back? Donise suckers. Well, rumor has it. <laughs> We were Donizetti, so I'll get that oh, instead. No, no, I'm just kidding. That sounds more Italian. No, this though. is this is this is why I also want to go get it with someone because I keep messing up which flower I want to get. So I want to get a dandelion. Nope, daffodil. See, there I go. There I go. <laughs> oh, I got used bad. to my friend. You do know what a dandelion is. Being daffodil. So daffodil is like my the flower of my um, birth month, which is also my brother's, and so it would be in memory of my brother. But I'm scared yeah. I'm gonna end up you need to print with a dandelion, and I'm like, "This is like August. I didn't yeah. need to do this." <laughs> <laughs> it's a daffodil, so I need to go with someone, or I'm That's gonna mess it up. Hilarious! <laughs> it would be amazing if you accidentally got a dandelion. Yeah, That's what I'm yeah. Saying. I can't go by myself. Yep. I got the wrong month. Whoops. Anywho. Well, that's the, yeah, that's going to be a great episode. <laughs> We're going to talk about that. I did it, guys. I, I actually blew it. Spiral is going to be dogs yeah. part two. No, this is awesome. Dogs part two. <laughs> totally. <laughs> okay. Is- well, enough dummery. Yeah. Cut it out, guys. This is so stupid. We'll cut most of that. <laughs> JK, JK. Oh, wait. This, JK. Isn't this about tattoos? <laughs> no, <it's> yeah. <laughs> Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for listening to this 10,000 Minute Experiment podcast. And we are 18 years old. This episode is episode 18, so we can legally vote. And if you've been with us for a while, you could legally vote because speaking of voting, if you want to like this, comment on this, or subscribe to this, that would be super helpful for us. So please do that. Um, I just want to give a shout out to Jim C., uh, to Cole, and to Anna 
for jumping in to partner with us financially. So some of you guys are doing monthly, some of you are one-time things, but this isn't cheap and we love what we're doing. So if this is helpful for you and you've got the ability to support us and walk with us, please do. Um, we're working on an email right now to send out with video updates on what we're, things we're doing to people that are partnering with us and for the new things that we're moving towards. So go to 10,000minutes.com and go up in the upper right, it says donate and join us. Also, if you guys want to get free text messages, you can text 10K, 10K to the number 55678, 10K to 55678. And if you have any other thoughts on things that you'd love for us to jump into, please let us know. So this week, we've got my friend Ryan Stevenson, and please check out his music. He also has a great podcast called Weathering the Storm that I'm actually on in a few weeks. I think you're going to love this episode. Here we go. So this week, uh, with the 10th out of... Shaka Khan, the 10,000 minute experiment, we are practicing the presence of God hmm. and what that looks like. It's an old book, Brother Lawrence. I love it. I love Brother Lawrence. And you know, I read that when I was like four. Of course. But it is so profound, the idea. <laughs> I didn't really read it when I was four. I know. But it's like, big enough. I mean, to the people. It's, it's like, oh, yeah, you yeah. guys can't see my fingers, but it's, it's, a, tiny pretty, little it's a tiny little book. Yeah. Yeah. It was college requirement. But- A powerful little idea, for sure. Mm -hmm. And it stuck with me, obviously, for a long time, because that's kind of the point of 10,000 Minutes, is really practicing the presence, joining Jesus in my life instead of working for him or just doing it on Sunday morning. So, Ryan, just a question for you. I've got two. And the hope here is not to get all cool and Christian-y, which I love about you, because you won't get all cool and Christian-y. It's truly something I love about you, is that you are not the antithesis of that, but you have kind of fought for just being the Ryan Stevenson. Like, who God has made you in this moment. There's not a lot of BS that comes out of your mouth, which I really have appreciated over the years and still do. Even us at the fire the other night. You are just, you're a good friend. And uh, that sounds really weird. We were at a bonfire the other night. But... (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. (laughs) We're we're arsonists as well. (laughs) Uh, anyways, so part of this is saying, are there any practices or rhythms that you've put in your life at certain points in your life? Not even that, mm-hmm. well, you know what I do every day? I do mm-hmm. this. And we might, which would be amazing. But in your life, have there been any practices or rhythms that you've put into your days that have helped you just stay in the awareness of Jesus, of joining Jesus? Yeah. Um, and I wouldn't say that I get right up in the morning and I dive into the word and I have this routine, but I th- next. Yeah. So thanks for having me today. <laughs> yes, yes. Um, Can Bart come back? Yes. Uh, oh, no. Right, right. <laughs> just give him a chance guys. I feel like definitely something that has been just a part of my moment by moment awareness is like right when I get up in the morning, I started doing it years ago as I just, I immediately have my mind just go to a place where I am just aware that, God, you're with me. I'm your son. Even if I just don't even feel like it, if I'm not feeling a thing and I'm stressed or I'm heavy or it feels like my world is melting down, I just try to really be deliberate and intentional of starting my day just being aware that God is it. Because I feel like if you start there, you're already setting the tone in in a way for just where your mind and your headspace is going to mm-hmm. be throughout the day. Mm-hmm. And I know that that's such a simple little thing, but it really does really does help me. Before I, my feet even get out the bed, I just I wake up in the morning, whether my alarm goes off or one of my kids wakes me up, and I'm just like, Jesus, right? thank you that I woke up, and God, just so be near. <clears throat> I love that. So in our sober moments, and I'm using sober very specifically, not <laughs> legitimately drunk sober. I just mean when I'm more aware of reality in life, we can practice these things. When we're more drunk on fear or worry or whatever, we forget these things. So what pulls you out of the awareness of Jesus? Either in the mornings when you wake up, you're like, nope. Yeah. (laughs) What pulls you out of those things? I would say it is, uh, it is fear. It's focus and giving my attention to the stinking thinking. It's things that haven't even manifested. It's the what ifs. It's not living in the present. It's living either either. I spend a lot of my time living in the past or in the future. You know, I think that's something that we all struggle with is is living right here, right now, in the moment, being thankful for today. 
I guess to answer your question, the things that really jar me out of my peace in, in being still in those moments in the presence of God is wondering what if or <sighs> the fear. Give me an example of something that pulls you out. Comparison. The comparison game. <clears throat> Bad. My journey has been so so weird and so quirky and so crazy and just not a very pretty, sexy journey into this space that I'm in now. Yeah. It's been hard and it's been a fight and it's been beautiful all at the same time. And we've had victory and we've had defeat and we've had amazing seasons and gut-wrenching, hopeless seasons. And so yeah. I think that because I already deal with profound insecurity, <laughs> it gives me a propensity to navigate my day from a posture of inadequacy, yeah. from defeat. Yeah. Yeah. And so it doesn't take much for me to look on social media and see everybody is so dope and they're so good and yeah. they're so successful yeah and it just it has a tendency to just squash and put me in a place yeah. in my heart and in mm -hmm. my thoughts like i'm well i'm it doesn't matter how hard i work or mm -hmm. how much success i yeah. get i'm never gonna be that person and mm -hmm. look how easy it is for everybody else and look how hard it is for me it's like those are the things that really rattle me out of my peace yeah for sure yeah. That literally makes you drunk on those things so much that your awareness yeah. is impaired. Yeah. yeah. I was just going to say, I literally posted on Instagram yesterday the exact same thing. Because I was just going through my day like, fine. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I'm sitting there with my wife. This like piece of information comes into my brain. <laughs> I put my phone down. I was like, I got to go. And I like walked outside, like walked around for like half an hour. It was like all of that like hit me at mm -hmm. once. Yeah. Like I've got a new record coming out and all this stuff. And I realized all the things that I can't control and that are like out of my hands. And then like start comparing to all of these other things. Same thing that you're doing. And it just put me like in the worst space. And I'm like fighting against this, trying to talk to my wife. I'm like, can be sober enough in the moment to realize what's happening. But then still at this point in life where it's like, I still can't get over it. Yeah. <laughs> So I still had, I feel like I still don't have the the tools to yeah. deal with it. I know what's happening, whether that's an encouragement to it you is. or not. I, I feel like it's it is all. because I feel like one of the biggest tactics of the enemy, if you will, is to get us isolated. To, at least what he does with me is just that whisper in my ear that you are you alone. Suck. You're yeah. the only yeah. one yeah. who feels like yeah. this. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everybody else is fine, but yeah. you... Uh -huh. It's yeah. like that that isolation, compartmentalization mm -hmm. is can be paralyzing. Yeah. For me anyways. Chris, in that moment you went on a walk and you came back like knowing what was happening but couldn't fix it. Talk about that. Yeah. I think I was able to say, okay, here's what's happening to mm -hmm. me. Like spiraling out on something that I have zero control yeah. in. But I still couldn't change my mood about it. Yeah. And my wife, she knows me well enough at this point where she like, you know, kind of takes a step back, make sure I'm OK, but and reassures me in whatever way she can. But then I just think it takes time, yeah. you know, and for me, I've just got to work through it and get over it and then change my perspective and realize like all the things that I do have. So that was one of the things that I started mm. going through is like. I sat on my porch for a second and just like listened. I was trying to like find God in the moment. It actually made me think like, what's the presence of God right now? Mm. And then some sort of like thankful or grateful list of, wow, God, you've like provided for us in all these ways and blah, blah, blah. Mm. Cause what's the worst, that, like, where does this yeah. take me? What's the worst yep. scenario that right. this mm -hmm. takes me down? Right. And, um, and maybe it's that like, no one likes me and I can't support my family or whatever. And so then you start building back on that. But it doesn't make the feeling go away. Right. It's not like a quick fix. But I think we can all find perspective and find God still in the midst of it. Mm -hmm. Just for fun, in your actions in that moment, in that 30-minute walk, what would you have believed to be true about yourself? You, if I'm completely, completely honest, honest. Yeah. I think that I was more of in a pity party. I deserve this. Because I've worked so hard. Why yeah. is my journey, like what you're saying, why is my road harder than this person's road? Yeah. Hmm. Or why can't I have this or do this? So it's really more of like a, gosh, a little pity party for myself yeah. that I needed to snap out of a bit. Yeah. Hmm. What did you believe to be true about God in that moment? 
that when when you're drunk in those moments of comparison. He doesn't dish out things fairly. Huh. Right. Totally. That, that, that life doesn't happen equally to the same measure of goodness to everyone. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I still might think that. Yeah. So that that might just be true. And what what would your identity be in that moment? Um, in a drunk I'm, moment. Yeah, just worthless. Yeah. And then what would you believe to be true about other people? Oh, gosh. Like th- their view of you equals what yeah, part of your identity. Yeah, I guess it doesn't matter as much. Huh. Yeah. In those in that drunk moment. Yeah. Yeah. Um Oh, I must have tricked this person into liking me. <laughs> or my mom thinks I can sing good or whatever it is. Yeah. <laughs> you know? yeah, yeah. 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 Mm-hmm. Um, so you discount the good and you amplify those negative voices in your yeah. head. That is so true. We discount the good and we amplify those negative voices in our heads, right? So if we're not practicing the presence of God and listening to his voice and his heart for us... We jump into comparison, envy, greed, contempt. I'm better than somebody else. We're quick to act and slow to speak, slow to listen. What voices are you listening to this week? Who has your attention? talk about this all the time our our friend Kevin has just jacked me up with this way of looking at things and I'm always trying to look at everything through these lenses of like dang it I know what I believe in my heart or my thoughts like my theology but really my life is just showing such a different theology Mm -hmm. and at the bottom of it is my identity Mm -hmm. if yesterday you were able if your identity was so secure and like oh dude God's at work and all these cool things and I get Mm -hmm. to play a part of it and I'm loved like yeah. Which normally, like especially the last year or so, has been where I've been. Yeah. And it was yeah. so strange because, and I've done a lot of work to get there. And then this one thing, I was like, what? Yeah. Yeah. Are it's you real. kidding me? Mm-hmm. And then I'm like, well, what happened to the last year and a half of like good work that's happened? Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you, you know, it's crazy how quickly. Um, so fast. That can flip. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm going to just hear, I'm not dogging you going. What no, you do, all you no, need to do is it. get so, to right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. I appreciate it. But it's it's not all. All you need to do is get to this place, and then everything's great. It yeah. just it's just interesting to like observe yeah. it yeah. from mm-hmm. the outside, uh, as if we're looking at it in a box. Yep. You know, hmm. Ryan, for you, is so you think about the comparison game? Let's say because if that's something that kind of one of the things that throws you out of just living yeah. in the presence of God. Part of living in the presence of God is knowing who you are in the presence of God as well. Mm-hmm. What do you believe to be true about others in that scenario? Kind of like what Chris was saying. It's it's so easy to look at our situation and feel like, like I got to work harder than everybody else. And, right. and everybody else gets it so easy. Yeah. And it's, it's like I start to covet other people's journey yeah. when I just don't even realize that how amazing... <sighs> And how gracious and how beautiful the Lord has just been so near in my own journey if I just step back. Like, I mean, I just, I resonate with what you're saying, Chris, mm-hmm. about if you just get out and take a 40,000 foot view of, of your life, of my life. Yeah. You know, I worked as a paramedic for years yeah. and, I, and, I always, and I always think about when I start acting like a baby and when I just start getting emo and I'm just like having a pity party and I'm like, oh my, la 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 la. I, I know the narrative. I know the tapes that are going on in yeah. my head. Mm-hmm. And then I start to think, man, I've seen a lot of death. Yeah, I have wow. had my hands in a lot of You've situations got crazy where stories, yeah. people, ha- I've seen people die countless times. I've intervened in situations where people's lives were ripped to pieces, literally and metaphorically. I've seen addiction, rape, murder, suicide, you name it. And yeah. that's other people's, I've seen great loss. I've, I've bore witness to mm. the tragedy and the darkness of humanity wow. right in my face. And I did that for years. Yeah. And now I play music for a living and I have three kids and I get to be on tour buses and I fly around the world. And when I get to this point in a musical journey and in my comparison world and yeah. social media, mm-hmm. I, I immediately start <laughs> to snap and think I could be on the freeway 
uh, helping scrape up yeah. bodies yeah. or wow. be in trailer parks facing, you know, suicides and, and heroin overdoses and, and, and a myriad of yeah. things that I've actually, it just, it's, it's a perspective. Yeah. yeah. When I think about it in the context of this is reality, this is a reality for a lot of people. And it was my reality for almost nine years. And this is what I'm doing now. It makes it easier to just say, gosh, get, pull your head out. I mean, yeah. live in some reality. Stop this whole immature, you know, complaining thing. Then I think about our brothers and sisters all around the world. Right. That, yeah. and especially in this last season, yeah. my heart has been like, Th how dare week. I even remotely gripe and complain about something that's not happening in my musical world when my brothers and sisters are being drug out into the streets and executed and yeah. and put into cages and persecuted to the highest degree for owning a Bible, yeah. for, for the, our faith in the Lord. And here I am in our amazing country and I'm safe and I have everything that I could ever want yeah. and I'm griping about somebody getting an opportunity that I should have had. Yeah. While my brothers and sisters are being persecuted and they're being executed for their just saying that they believe in Jesus, that is major conviction for me. Yeah. Right. And I want to live, I want to stay right there. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. How do you stay there and not go to a shame place? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's just having grace for ourselves. Yeah. And I feel like I'm learning that more and more mm -hmm. because I used to immediately just wallow in shame, like, yeah, oh yeah. God, I'm so sorry. I know I suck, that I suck. Yeah, I suck. Which oh my gosh. And now it's like, God, okay, yeah. Lord, you know what? I'm sorry. Yeah. I feel like the older I get, the more I'm being aware of how Abba feels about me as his son. Mm -hmm. Like, cause I know how I feel about my boys. Mm -hmm. There's nothing they could do that would, they should never go to a place of shame with me yeah. on their nastiest, dirtiest, filthiest, most right. mouthy, complaining, horrible day. Right. I don't ever want them to feel shame. I want them to run to me. Such a good visual. And yeah. that's, that's how I feel like Abba feels about us in my places of insecurity and shame. Like I feel like he just wants us to, come straight to him and not wallow in shame but like say hey son but how about we how about we think about that yeah. a little bit different yeah mm -hmm. you know yeah <laughs> yeah that's where i'm starting to go yeah. now because i just feel like my heart is changing my heart is my life has changed in yeah. the last year as you and i have yeah. have talked you know yeah. and it's becoming easier the more i grow in my relationship with jesus the more i'm just Every, I feel like everything is completely flipping for me to a place of duty and works and the treadmill of performance yeah. and the comparison mm -hmm. game to a posture of, oh, that's my dad. And and when I crash and burn and when I mess up or when I get dirty, yeah. I, I'm really starting not to wallow in the shame and the guilt and all the things that come with that and just come to my dad's lap and just say, Abba, thank you for loving me and being so fascinated with me, even in my filth. Mm -hmm. And it just, it starts to change. It really does shift your perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it makes you have a lot of grace for everybody else. Yeah. Yeah. When, when we can get to those places, those are sober moments. Mm -hmm. I, I have two thoughts. One is just, you were talking about being in the presence of God. I think as Jesus is always saying, repent, repent, which is rethink your thinking, not mm -hmm. what we've always thought it was. Mm -hmm. But it's rethink your thinking on all these things. I mean, you are in this season rethink, trying to rethink your thinking on things. Mm -hmm. And I think we do that best when we're walking with and in the presence of Jesus. The other thing I was thinking about that's just a different twist on this is that our view of God dictates so much of whether I want to be in the presence of God. Like oh, practicing mm -hmm. being in the presence. Mm -hmm. Some people might be like, well, being in the presence of that God, the God that I have in my mind, mm -hmm. yeah. no thank you. Mm -hmm. Like going to the principal's office or totally, something. Totally. Yeah. Where yeah. versus what Ryan's saying is right. like, me as a dad, when my kids come to me or they do something stupid, I'm never like, you idiot. Right. You know, I might go, that sucks. Right. And that was not awesome. But I don't want you to go to shame, man. I, You know, exactly. just that yeah. heart of yep. the father is such a different heart than I think many people and all of us see 
God, the presence of God is like, oh, crap, I don't want to go there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What's he going to make me do or rethink? Or am I going to Africa? Am I going to have right. – it's just – So, like, the first step in being present to God is, like, having a right view of who God is. Mm -hmm. I think that's what discipleship is, is mm -hmm. people – I don't think it's a program or a book we go through. It's it's this. It's like us uh, just having conversations that are helping us reframe our view of a real God. I mean, even as Ryan was talking right there, like I could feel a weight for me from the last day like lifting off. I'm yeah. like, God, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, you yeah. know, yeah. He's, mm. And it just feels, you know, I feel lighter. I feel better. It's nice to share experience, mm -hmm. you know, and you can say that like when you're going through those moments, you can say, okay, I, I know what this is. I know that my friends feel this too and blah, 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 but it, it really does help to voice mm -hmm. it and yeah. to sit down and talk it out. Oh my gosh. I think mm -hmm. ultimately, man, this is the conclusion that I'm coming to is I have to be rooted and established in the fact that I am just beloved. Mm. Every single thing in our life, I'm learning this, is just a secondary consequence to being established in our beloved identity as chill, as kids of the king. If we don't get that right, mm -hmm. and I've been in the church my whole life, yeah. and I'm just now at 40 years old, finally relearning and re being repositioned and reseated like seated in a place of just i'm just i'm just a son like i'm that's my dad like and first it's really unnerving because you start to think these thoughts like well gosh what if i just lose everything or what if i just don't focus on this and this and this and this and mm -hmm. i'm not task oriented anymore then i'm not going to get anything done and i'm not going to you know i'm a worker and i have yeah. ambition no I'm learning now to scale everything back and to just sit and be seated. Not that I stop working or doing anything, right. but my heart's motivation uh, is not doing this and this and this and this. It's like everything that I'm doing now, I'm doing from a place of rest and and being seated in my identity as a son. And I'm for one reason or the other, I feel like I'm finding more peace and rest and health. Mm -hmm and relational value with my with other people and not beating down the door yeah. Yeah. of task yeah but just approaching everything from a point of i'm just resting and and at the end of the day i think we need, all need to ask ourselves and this is what i've been asking myself particularly out of this season that we've all been in and this last you know shutdowns and all the things that are so polarizing right now that we yeah. can right. talk about the rest of the day as a christian as an ambassador of christ as an image bearer and as a light bearer as a city set on the hill what is your life worth what does it actually mean if you if everything goes away and you don't have anything that you love so much right mm. now and you cling to and that we put all of our effort and energy right, and our right. focus on. What is actually important in your life? It's your relationships. Yeah. It's your family. It's your children. It's your wife. It's your spouse. It's your it's your community. Like I'm I'm taking mm. everything there. I'm stripping everything down to a point where mm. I, if I lose my record deal, if I lose my vehicles, if I lose my what do I have? Mm. I have people. Yeah. I have my relationship with Jesus and my relationship with other, others. And that really honestly should be enough. And we're getting an opportunity. And I'll, I know I'm getting long winded. You're doing great. I feel like we're all getting an up close and personal, amazing opportunity right now in this season we've all been in to actually be Christians, to actually live uh, out our faith to be mouthpieces and ambassadors of light because we've been really, and I'm guilt, I'm talking to myself, man. I've been guilty of being complacent and jaded and just indifferent and, and letting things slide and letting things go for the sake of, well, you know, I don't want to ruffle any feathers. Right. Or, it's like, we're in, I feel like we're in a different time now where Christians, especially we get an opportunity to, live out a a wild radical faith right now in real time and everything else should be secondary honestly i love all of that and i think there's so much there 
to rethink our thinking on, <laughs> you know, just like daily. So when we're drunk, I don't see this beautiful reality that you're talking about right now. Yeah. You know, this is, it's, most of the stuff is amazing. And then we go, something happens and then we just get thrown off. Yep. What is some kind of practice of the awareness of Jesus, presence of God? Is there some kind of practice or thing that, that you do or anybody in this group does that kind of pulls us back and goes, all right, take a deep breath. Like, what is that thing? Is there a thing that you guys have noticed that works for you to then get you to that place of sobriety of like, what's really going on here? How are we really representing Jesus, the light of the world? Yeah. I mean, I can answer that really easy for me. Like what I was saying to you, Chris, when I think about all the things that I could complain about and all the things that I don't have in my, you know, uh, my need or my wants or my desires or any of that, when I start wallowing in a place of deficit, yeah, I think it's just remembering and being conscious and aware. And the Bible talks about that so much about remembering, remembering the yep. pillars, yep. not forgetting yep. these things, but remember mm -hmm where you come from. Go back to the place of that first altar. Go back to the altar mm. and remember what I've done and where I've brought you. I think we need to love that. Literally come back to the places of those altars where we remember and we live in remembrance and reminder yeah. of how good he is and what he's done in our lives. Yeah. Ryan's talking about when in the Old Testament God would have the Israelites stack stones as altars to be reminders to them and to the generations to come of God's nearness and his work in the midst of all things. Remember back in episode five with Susie Lind, she said how often we forget to remember all that God's done. We forget to remember. So where are the stacked stone moments in your life? And if you're in desperate need of remembering right now, this is perfect for you. And if you're skating through life at this moment, this is a great practice because manure happens. So as we sit in the presence of God, where are the stacked stone moments in your life? Let's practice remembering. such a good practice and I think for me and I don't know if this is for everybody but I do that better when I'm with people I think that's true I think it's true I think for instance back to my yesterday I needed a second by myself yeah mm -hmm. just to get over the the pity party part of it and then I think then like coming into community with my wife having mm -hmm. this conversation Mm -hmm. Like those are the things when you, when you can actually put perspective, like real perspective around it. Yeah. Cause I can tell myself the things over and over. Totally. I, I need to feel it too. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think that's what community <laughs> does yeah. is yeah. it helps you feel it. Cause sometimes we don't trust our own voice Yeah. Uh, or the things that we know. Yeah. Sometimes for me, it doesn't become real until I say it out loud yeah. to people. It's like just in my head. I think too things like when you said it doesn't become real something that makes my situation feel not so dire is just knowing that somebody else has gone through it too yeah. like when i say it all the time you know from stage or at our concerts or whatever one of the most transformative moments of my life was the times i've been healed the most in my own personal life is when i've heard other men and women just get up and confess mm -hmm. and talk about what's actually happening in their life because the Bible says our confession brings healing. Confess your sins one to another. There's something that takes place. There's a life and there's a healing that takes place inside of our testimony and our confession and our and our story that I kind of agree with what you guys are yeah. saying is that I I do too need kind of a minute alone where I'm just like, oh, yeah, right. you know, kind of processing some things in my head. But when I get with people and I get my energy from people, yeah. <laughs> you know, I'm such a people person. I'm so relationally driven that to me, I I feel like I heal and move through things when I'm around other people who can yeah. just feel it too. Yeah. I have to feel it, yep. you know? Yep. Well, thank you, Ryan. I'm honored, man. I hope I didn't get super long-winded on did. you today. <laughs> and we, we've got extensive <laughs> you notes for you. It's going to be great. Yeah. Actually, your wife is outside. <laughs> yeah, she's nice, waiting. Nice. I hear her honking. Hurry up. <laughs>
Wah, 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 wah. Okay, Ryan, what are you going to yeah. No, I like your wife a lot. Okay, Ryan, now is the time when we're going to get real serious. Okay. Uh-oh. It's called 10,000 Thoughts with Ryan Stevenson, mm. the one with not as many tattoos. Be that's the whole, f- I think that's the title of it. <laughs> 10,000 Thoughts with the real Ryan Stevenson with not as many tattoos. Pre-tats. So here's the deal. We're going to give you a bunch of words, yeah. and you give us the first thing that comes to your mind. No, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to warn you. No, no, it's okay. It's okay. We, <laughs> we, can, we can beep. The first answer is the right answer. <laughs> yes. Jason Gray had some good beeps <laughs> earlier, so I think we're doing great. So, guys, you can jump in, too. I've got just a few that we're, I'm just going to check out there. Cool. Ryan, are you ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Remember, remember. A word. A word. What? Remember, remember. remember. <laughs> what was that word? Remember. That's the word. What do you think I said? Uh, yeah, now we're playing telephone. Okay. <laughs> remember, this is a uh, quick, quick, quick draw. Okay. Quick round. Quick round. Uh, when I dance, I look like. Michael Jackson. Oh my Whoa, gosh! Is that confidence. true? No. <laughs> that doesn't really like pop in your mind. But I, I, keep, I always try. Yeah. Gosh. Uh, the nineties. Say by the bell. Yes. Oh. When I wake up in the morning and let's go. The yes, best you, decade that, to be alive yeah, ever, in so my good. opinion. I'm so glad that we're all in our 30s. <laughs> at yeah, least. Well, I'm in my 30s, uh, guys. Yeah. Well, this, all yeah, the time. yeah I'm in my 20s. Wow. <laughs> Anybody? Uh, three favorite movies Dumb and Dumber, Strong. Shawshank Redemption, <gasps> Point Break. I love yes. yes. I love the. the breadth of that <laughs> yes it's so true <laughs> just stupid humor genius yes. powerful yes. emotional and then action packed like and Gary yeah. Busey like I th- I could just watch it over and over <laughs> you oh talk gosh. you me too like, oh my I, gosh I have them all memorized anyway. oh, man. gosh okay I'm here for uh, it uh, favorite song you didn't write like besides one of Chris and I songs okay. no don't <laughs> I mean, don't 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 patronize us right Oh my gosh, man. I love so many songs. I know. G- give me two or three. Uh, Again, Someone You Love, Louis Capaldi. Oh, it's such a good song. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Um, yep. Come on, Ryan. You Ryan you're doing great. Cover of How song. about yeah. uh, Dua Lipa Levitating? Oh. Uh, the bass lines on that oh. album. Yeah. Dated her. Perfect. Doja Cat, Say So. Oh, there's my top. There's my three that I wow. wow that I wish I would have wow. written those. Okay, three. strong. I also appreciate that they're all like within the last. Yeah, these yeah. are awesome. Yeah, yeah. But the I'm well into it. made melodies, well made. Or Hotel California. Well, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, anybody okay. get a guitar? Anybody? <laughs> um, are we a guitar center? <laughs> so uh, if you're getting Froyo, oh. what do you get? Had sugar you? in 15 years, but okay. Uh, Keep it going. You haven't had sugar in 15 years. This is what that looks like. Oh my gosh! Can you see my rib cage? <laughs> <laughs> so Have you not had sugar in fifteen years? No, I used to weigh three hundred pounds, bro. Oh, so I stopped eating bread and sugar when I was twenty-five. Wow, twenty-six. Oh. So I have not been to. I haven't had ice cream or frozen yogurt in. Oh, buddy! I know oh. it's really actually depressing. We might have a I'm confrontation the, right I'm here. I'm the worst guy to want to go out to meals with or to have over to oh. your house. It's just better if I stay home. Oh my god! <laughs> okay, oh wait. My uh, god. We need party round too. Let's calm <laughs> down. Like, I'm okay? just gonna have some chicken and. Salad. We can meet for drinks, and appetizers, <laughs> but don't invite but me. Drinks? Out to How do you do drinks? I. Just like there's sugar in drinks. Yeah. So after I've lost 130 pounds, yeah. like there's things like I have not given up coffee creamer. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I just won't do it. Right. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't seem to make me gain weight. Yeah. But I go to hot yoga every other day. I eat super clean. But if I want to have, you know, a drink. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Here and there. Yeah. Okay. Like whiskey every night. Yeah. Right. Uh, right. right. I'm just kidding. <laughs> uh, <laughs> But I Two don't whiskeys do whiskeys every night. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, I buy one three normal. doubles yeah. every night. Yeah, don't look behind you. I don't do that. But give me the frozen yogurt one. No, if I mean, look, it, 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 it's, <laughs> it's I irrelevant. Want to, I want to dream a little bit. <laughs> Please, yeah. I want to okay, answer. Okay, 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 okay. <laughs> so this is just, I, this is, I have a real curiosity. This, if you're going to Froyo, and I'm not talking Golden Spoon. I'm talking, well, I guess you could. Did you guys ever hear of Golden Spoon? Never. That's like a California thing. Did you have yeah. it up in the, no. the upper? Yeah. Okay, just kidding. So if you ever went to Froyo, if you ever would eat such a sinful thing, 
Uh, would you get a sweet and sour or would you get kind of chocolatey? Chocolate. Or would you do both? No, never sweet and sour. I don't like fruity flavored any kind of wow. ice cream or sugary stuff. We're so It's got to be How like vanilla or chocolate <laughs> or like cookie dough. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's got to be Reese's. like a creamy. Yes. Okay. I can't That's do your deal. fruit Reese's. tart flavored Reese's. anything. Reese's. Yeah. Reese's? I say I say both. Reese's, Reese's. Reese's, Reese's buttercup. It just sounds weird. <laughs> I'm just going to do you a favor. You can keep keep asking me a Dears, question. Uh, do you have an answer for that, Chris? Yeah, because it's so obvious. <laughs> it's plain vanilla ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> not not tart. No, plain vanilla, strawberries on top oh. with some granola. Oh. You need a little crunch. And if I'm feeling crazy, I'm going to put like <laughs> uh, a little chunk of Snicker bar or maybe like a... Like a gummy worm, you know what I mean? Just as a garnish. For, for looks. <laughs> on, but on top of the the strawberries. Yeah, I want to eat that separately. Really, <laughs> yeah. I'm not gonna like God. dive it in. I'm yeah. just gonna be like, oh, I want to enjoy a bite of that oh, and yeah. then oh, dive goodness. in. Uh, no, I'm with you. Well, what do you do? <laughs> oh my goodness, uh, I just go with chocolate chip cookie dough. Every there time. it is. Mm. My girl. Do you put toppings on it? Mm-mm. No. Wow. <gasps> Then I go grab a snack later. The toppings are a whole different experience. <laughs> I do the ice cream, then I go buy the gummy bears. Oh, there oh is something gosh. about chocolate chip cookie dough. Yeah, mm-hmm. is, yeah, yeah, magical. You can't. Mm-hmm. That's never gonna be. I'd just rather get beer. just the cookie dough and eat it. Yes, like, that's yes. a out true bucket, statement. You know I don't like cookies. Um, I think mine is really indicative of my enneagram uh, persuasion. I get two sides. I get like <laughs> tart. With strawberries or whatever on one side of my little bowl, and then I get some kind of, you know, chocolatey you something because I'm like, Why I can't miss out. Yourself? I don't want to miss out. That is your <laughs> wing eight this. right there. Wow. Yeah. Oh my nope. I was wing. I, that's seven. That's my seven of like going. I might miss out. Oh. Okay. See, I'm, I just I'm a know six that wing. everybody in my family is going to have a little something. So I'm like, I can get a bite that's of that. That's true. Oh my goodness. Get a bite of this. Um, speaking of a bite of this. Oh, sorry. Uh, Ryan is just showing us a picture of him pre now. Well, I was only two. I was only only two. two, I was only two seventy five. And what were you at other points? Three hundred. Wow. That was right outside of a cold stone. So. (laughs) Wow. In Southern California. This came (laughs) full circle. (laughs) Everybody. Uh, Ryan, with the bleached hair, buddy. Thank you so much. Yes, that's the bleached hair. (laughs) Bleached hair (laughs) earrings. Gosh. My mother, God rest her soul. Like she, when I came home with tattoos. My parents turned me loose to college. I went away for three months. Yeah. Two and a half hours away. I come home. I'm tatted up, <laughs> bleached hair, earrings, a tongue ring. My mom and dad met me at a Chinese restaurant in Eugene, Oregon, right by Uvo. And I went down there to see him and I walked into the Chinese restaurant and my mom just started <gasps> sobbing. Oh. And I'll never forget that. And my dad's like, just you know that look oh. of like well, yeah <laughs> dang what happened to you oh my, my mom's gosh. like oh my gosh my baby so uh, i don't know what any of that meant about oh it's, anything. Just, it's, it's pra- layered it's layered yeah, yeah it's, it's practicing it's the presence of god yeah i'm just thankful for it. were you a large <laughs> child were you large no as a kid? i was i was i was super skinny and i have a weird and i'll just i'll just end with this i didn't <laughs> hit puberty till i was 19 so like I grew normally till about the sixth grade and then junior high happened. So like I come back into the seventh grade, all of my friends are like leaning out yeah. and getting yoked up yeah, yeah. and like they're becoming men. They're, they're going through their growth spurts. And I stayed that sixth grade kid till my freshman year of college. Wow. So I have a very that shaped brutally you. tormented high school yeah. experience. That yeah. shaped you for sure. So you talk, don't I like when people like I'm being bullied, like maybe listen, I promise you. And this, I was in high school before the days where we even really called it bullying. Yeah. I was terrorized yeah. uh. by, by this. So like, is there anybody you want to call out right now yeah. on the podcast by name? <laughs> yeah. oh, man. You know what? Fight, 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 fight. I love what you're no, thinking about. No, you're thinking about. I'm going to have to jump in and say, I have my wife right here. She'd be like, the presence yeah. right now. Oh, yeah, let's I'm practice practicing, practicing, practicing the wrong the presence. presence. Well, no. next time we have you on, we're going to talk about how that shaped you. Yeah, and we're going to have a few of your high school friends join us. Uh, yeah. It's going to be great. Yeah. 
in all honesty, that experience played plays into every single yeah, thing oh, we've yes. talked wow. about today. Yes, oh, no, yes, no. for yeah. sure. Like I can relate every every issue or thought process or perspective or paradigm shaping oh, yeah. thing in my life mm-hmm. to seventh grade. Wow. I can't. Gosh, next episode's gonna be great. Froyo is gonna be flowing. <laughs> We're just- it's going to be at a, at, at a Froyo place. Oh. So we'll do it there. I love y'all. Thank you. Thank you.